everyone, welcome back. Today we had planned a different video. I was going to talk to you about how I style my hair, how I take care of it, because a lot of you have been asking for that. But for some reason, I have been bombarded with videos, Instagram posts, TikToks about Emily in Paris and the costume design from the series. I've watched it, it's not my cup of tea, but I do believe there is an unsung hero in style when it comes to the costume design of the show, which is Sylvie, of course. Sylvie is the best character from Emily in Paris. She's not only the wisest and the coolest, but she's the best dresser by far. So I thought today we could go over her wardrobe and take a few styling tips. But before we start, I would like to just make a little comment about something that I've been seeing a lot, which is a lot of negativity regarding Emily in Paris, saying that what she wears would never translate to real life, that her wardrobe is completely out of touch with reality. If you're looking for realness, if you're looking for truth, if you're looking for genuine day-to-day, -day, Emily in Paris is not going to provide you that. I mean, it's a TV show about a girl who is a marketing manager. She's like 12 years old and she just moves to Paris to manage a huge chunk of a very established business in luxury. I mean, that would never happen in real life. So if you're thinking that this show is aiming to provide you with reality, you are unfortunately mistaken. Go watch a Ken Burns documentary, read a biography. I don't know, Emily in Paris is not the way to go. Hey everyone, sorry about the interruption. Just a quick note because I was editing the video and I don't think that I made myself very clear. When I say that the criticism of Emily in Paris is unfair, I am not talking about the actual screenplay or the writing. I am talking about costume design and the wardrobe. That is all. I did watch the whole series and I feel like they try to use a lot of caricatures and stereotypes of certain cultures as a tool for humor. I think that that can be funny sometimes when done in a smart way, but Emily in Paris just does it in a very obvious, childish and honestly kind of ignorant way way i mean the episode with the ukrainian girl who approved that who thought that would be funny and coming from brazil myself a country that is usually portrayed as a place where people walk around naked all of the time where women are easy and everybody has a monkey for a pet i am quite sensitive to this type of thing i do feel like in certain moments the actual french cast manages to break a few of those prejudices and they put Emily in her place, which is very satisfying when it happens. And I really hope that in the next couple of seasons, the writers do take into consideration the amount of pushback and critique that they got and just treat other cultures with respect. That's it, rent over, back to the video. So now that that is out of the way, let's get to Sylvie Grato's wardrobe. Ooh la la. All right, so I have my trusty computer here with me so we can go through her looks together. A few reasons why I think she is the best dressed character from the show is number one, I think she is the one that dresses like someone in the fashion industry would actually dress. So the choices of brands, the choices of fabrics, the choices of colors and prints, that to me is very in tune with what I know people in the industry to wear. I also love how she's very confident about her style. So unlike Emily, who's still trying to find herself, prove herself, she's still playing around, discovering what she likes and what she doesn't, Sylvie has taken a few walks around that block and she is very confident so she doesn't go for loud very showy blingy things she's more subdued she's more discreet and she just looks like she knows what she's doing third thing that i love about this character is that even though she is a boss and she is a working woman and she's very powerful she's actually very feminine very sexy so you get that mix that almost reminds me of Samantha from Sex and the City. She is exuberant, but not over the top. And that comes only with confidence and with knowing how to dress yourself. I actually saw a few articles saying that she 
maybe was inspired by or reminds a lot of people of Karine Hoytfeld, former editor-in-chief of French Vogue. Again, with that very edgy but chic, elegant but sexy style that French women pull off perfectly. All right, so first thing that I think Sylvie is a master in is wearing black. We have this idea in our heads that black is a safe bet. It is. It looks good on everyone. It is a slimming color. It is easy to combine, easy to match. But too much black can sometimes look a little bit boring if you don't play around with it. So I love that this character actually has a lot of variations in black. So for instance, this little number that I believe is from Lumvan could be a very obvious, very safe bet, but the fact that there is a little bit of trimming of feathers on the sleeves just gives it a little oomph, a little extra detail that shows that this character is not going to settle for boring, she's just going to add touches that will speak to her personality. This Alexander McQueen dress, for instance, you can see that the sleeves have a little bit of shape, a little more angular, but it is counterbalanced by the fact that it is a very form-fitting dress, it has a low neck, it does have a higher collar, so just this playing with proportions and with shapes makes black way less boring. This one is one of my favorite looks from her, is a Solace London dress, and you can see that the neckline has an angle, so it goes down and up again, and just to accentuate that and give it an extra layer of glamour, they added a DR brooch right at the angle. It doesn't look like she's trying too hard, but she's still playing with shape and playing with accessories, which you guys know that I love, and creating these memorable looks. Speaking of accessories, Sylvie is very good at combining her accessories without looking like she is trying too hard. So the brooch that we saw from Dior is a great little moment. I also love how she uses very thick belts, especially when she has a pencil skirt or maybe a shirt, to accentuate and actually elongate her waistline. Even though I would think that this character would go for much bolder jewelry, they actually play with more delicate, more feminine jewelry, so it's not actually dainty, but it is also not super exuberant, which is great if you're going for a more bold look on your clothes, just pairing them with more delicate accessories always helps, but Sylvie does not disappoint when it comes to bold jewelry either. For this look, which is a Rick Owens set, it is a wrap jacket and a skirt in gray. Gray might look a little bit boring, a little bit blah, but she adds this oversized chain gold necklace that brings life into her look, making her look, again, confident, poised, in control of herself. I really love that the costume designers also chose bags that are not obvious, so you don't see her running around with a Chanel double flap or with a Fendi peekaboo. They actually go for bags that are a little bit more subtle and more discreet, so again, not aiming to prove anything to anyone, she's just buying and wearing pieces that she likes and that complement her wardrobe. The color palette that the costume designers chose for this character is phenomenal. It is a mix of jewel tones with neutrals that works really, really well, and you can see that there are a few prints here and there. So for instance, in I think it is the first episode of the second season, when she's wearing this Dolce & Gabbana lace dress. I mean, Dolce & Gabbana lace dresses are iconic and they are very well known, but for that extra punch of fashion, they added this beautiful, beautiful sort of aubergine eggplant overcoat that perfectly complements the color palette of the actress. And this type of jewel, very deep, rich tone make a lot of appearances. For instance, in this one, she's wearing this black wrap skirt with a more structured cobalt blue top and finishes it off with this 
purple belt which with the cobalt blue goes perfectly together i also really like the addition of metallics to her wardrobe it's never too much it's never trying too hard but it does give that extra glimmer and that extra texture that actually we can replicate in real life so for instance here they pair black with this Saint Laurent kind of bronze, greenish gold shirt. And given that the shape of the blouse is really, really basic, it does not look like she's trying too hard. This look too could be in theory something very boring, so a pantsuit with a silk blouse. But what they did is the pantsuit is metallic, so great for having that full look that is impactful and powerful. And the shirt that they use is in a green, like an emerald green. So the contrast between the metallic with the flowiness and brightness of the shirt goes really, really well here. And I love that something like this could be also separated and made into different looks. So really thinking of metallics almost as a neutral is a really great way of stepping up and adding more glamour to your wardrobe. And lastly, something that I think Sylvie can teach us all is the power of dressing up for an occasion. Whenever there's a party or a dinner, you can see that she really takes the time to choose a look, think of a look and make everyone feel less dressed up than she is. This one that I think is season one is an Alexandra Vautier dress. It is very iconic, the one shoulder, it is asymmetric, very sexy, very confident. The green heel is phenomenal and goes beautifully with her skin tone and hair color. And here I find it very interesting that usually Sylvie's hair and makeup are very the same for her day to day, which just goes to show that maybe she has the routine, that if she's busy in the morning, she's not gonna spend hours and hours getting ready. But for a special occasion, she went the extra mile and did like these 1940s waves. She's also wearing a little bit more of makeup. And to me, the final touch of perfection is the fact that this is a one shoulder gown. So what she does to balance out the structure and the proportions is to wear a cuff on the arm that doesn't have the sleeve. So it really just balances out the values and the amount of information that you're getting from that look. But my favorite Sylvie look has got to be this jumpsuit. It is strapless, so it really needs something to add on to it. And I think that the styling choices here are genius. One, the hair pulled back. Two, the little chandelier earrings. Three, the belt for that scarf, that cream scarf that she carries over her shoulder instead of around her neck. And then when she is walking, she actually loops it over the crook of her arm. It is plain chicness in my book. And again, something that we can all try at home. So this is it, you guys. These are the style tips that I think Sylvie so kindly provided us. And I'm really excited to see how they continue to explore this character style in the next seasons. Hopefully you liked the video. Let me know down below what is your favorite Sylvie look if you have watched Emily in Paris. Thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe, share with your friends. And we will see each other again next time with a hair tutorial, like I promised. Bye!